In this lecture, we look at rolling. Consider a wheel that is rolling without slipping. There the wheel rolled, and we put the original back for comparison. And we see that the distance moved by the center of the wheel is equal to s. This s is also equal to the, is the same as the distance moved by a point on the rim of the wheel while it's rotating. So the, the, po the, the bottom point rotates up or to the upper left as the thing rolls, as the wheel rolls. So S is equal to R times the angle theta through which the, the wheel is rotated. So the velocity of the center of the wheel, or the center of mass of the wheel, is V sub CM times the time derivative of S, times which is equal to R times the angular velocity omega. Similarly, the acceleration of the center of the wheel, or center of mass, is equal to a sub cm, which is equal to r, the radius of the wheel, times the angular acceleration. The kinetic energy has two parts. One is the rotation around the center of mass, and the second is the translation of the center of mass. So we write k is equal to the rotational part plus the trans translational part. The rotational part become, is one half i sub cm, that's the moment of inertia around the center of mass, times the angular velocity squared, so omega squared, plus the translational part, which is one-half times the mass of the wheel, times the velocity of the center of mass squared. Well, we can replace the velocity of the center of mass squared with r times omega, so that we have a, a function of just omega for the total kinetic energy in the case of rolling. Let's look at an example of rolling downhill. We have a hoop that's initially stationary at the top of a hill and rolls down the hill without slipping. At the bottom it is lowered by a height h. The total mass of the hoop is m and the radius is r. What is its angular velocity and what is the velocity of the center of the wheel, or of the hoop? The initial kinetic energy is zero. The final potential energy for the hoop earth system is zero, or we can set it to be that. So that k final is equal to the potential initial. Well, u initial, potential energy initially, is equal to the mass of the hoop times g times h. So k final is equal to one half times the moment of inertia of the hoop times omega squared plus one half times m times r omega squared. This is the, what we had just found in the previous slide. We, and we can set that where we use for i hoop is equal to the mass of the hoop times r squared. And then we can set this k final where we have the two parts, one is the rotational and one is the translational. And that's equal to this mgh. So we've now used our, the k final is equal to u initial. If we solve for omega, we find that it's the square, it's gh divided by r squared, square rooted. That's the angular velocity for the hoop. If we want to know what the velocity of the center of mass is, we just have to multiply by r. And if we multiply by r, that will cancel the r, inside, the r squared inside the square root. So the velocity of the center of mass is just the square root of gh. So those are our final solutions.